The global data center construction market is expected to hit revenues of $45 billion by 2023. However, this is still seen as a silent industry within our own industry. Joining me today to shine some light on this sector, it's Paul Kossel, CEO of ISG PLC, and Tony Jacob, Vice President for Design and Construction for EMEA at Digital Realty. Uh, guys, thanks a lot for joining me. Let's start with the challenges that you face as a sector in terms of construction. Um, what are the challenges for you? I think one of the first things is, is predicting demand. Um, we, we believe that if we can see the pipeline, we can line everybody up to work to a predicted workload. What we're finding is that our customers are coming at us with unexpected demand. So if we can get that demand forecast absolutely right, we can get everything else lined up around it. Hmm. And then VSG. I, I concur with Tony. It's, it's really about visibility. Um, if you know what's coming up, you can plan for it. Uh, there is a finite amount of skilled resource in the, in the sector. And uh, you know, both tier one, tier two contractors need to plan and allocate its resource accordingly. Mm. But then as a sector as a, as a whole, do you still think this is more or less a silent industry, a silent vertical within the data center market? I, I think it is in, um, in for, for people outside of the data center um, family, mm. it's a bit of a mystery, but everyone in data centers tends to know what's going on, who the players are, mm. who's good, who's bad. So uh, there, there is definitely a community within the data center community. fraternity. <laughs> yeah. I think that's going to change. Yeah. As you said in your introduction, the scale of the build now is going to get it on everybody's attention. Yeah. So I think now it's going to merge out of the, out of the background into being the forefront. Some of the schemes that, that the industry is looking at now are going to be some of the biggest construction projects in Europe. And that can't go by unnoticed now. It's going to hoover up a lot of resource, a lot of skills, a lot of talent. And it's going to get everybody's attention. So uh, yeah, we're very excited about it. But if we carry on as operating as we are, there's going to be some big issues in the future. So I think now's the time for the industry to reflect, look at itself, and to find new ways of working. Okay. What sort of issues are we talking about? I, I would say there's a lot of waste in the industry already. And as Paul said, there's a scarcity of resource. So how do we maximize the use of that resource to proper plan it, prioritize it, and to make that productive? Hmm. Okay. But then, as a data center operator, what sort, of things, what sort of requirements do you look at when choosing a construction company or when choosing your partners to build your data centers? Reliability, first and foremost. We have to have people who deliver on their promises, on cost, on program, the quality, and obviously we want our buildings to be reliable. So it's not just around the day one deliverables, it's around ongoing performance. We have to be building business critical environments that are always on. Pretty much, we talk about five nines availability, which is the building that's never off. How do we rely on our construction partners to deliver that um, reliability? And then, Paul, how do you sort of work with Tony to ensure that this is delivered? Well, uh, you know, the, the, the good thing for us working with companies like Digital Reality is that they're forward thinking. Um, they involve the tier ones and tier two contractors early in the process. Uh, and what we find is that if, you know, in circumstances where you've, get, you've got the right contractor input early on with the design team, you tend to get the right solution and then execution becomes more certain, more predictable and you control the quality and all the scarce resource. Now, of course, one of the big topics in the sector right now is efficiency, as you mentioned, and a lot of conversation around renewables and heat fuses. How are you two doing this now at the moment? How do you provide sort of um, instruments to allow digital realty to but use renewable energies? Well, I think, you know, going back to the point about the early involvement, mm. I think when, when you have a situation where you have a collaboration of designers, um, tier one, tier two contractors, that's when you can really think about mm. standardised design, standardised components, efficiency, um, different ways to call, um, uh, particularly in certain locations where the environment you know, gifts free calling effectively. Mm. So all those things can happen when you get the right team involved early on. Mm. The reverse is true, that if you go through a traditional approach, um, which when you come outside of the, the, um, the data centre space is often the case, then those options are closed down unless you delay the project and then you get all the normal issues, challenges of cost overruns and, and time, mm. time delays. Okay, and then all this of course comes down to cost savings. How have you seen over the years the cost saving margins going up or down uh, according to the different construction techniques they've employed or so designed? I think there's, there's, a, there's a real need for standardisation. Mm. So I think the more standard you can make the product, the easier it is then to drive procurement benefits because there's a lot of certainty around what it is that you're looking for. And we're a great believer in planning ahead, standardizing, looking more and more for an off-site manufacturer, so getting things made in factories and using our construction sites as assembly areas. So with that comes a high level of predictability, a lot of risk and waste goes out the system. 
we can get more improved margins, so we get more cost certainty. Our suppliers also get a degree of risk removed, which means they can be looking at uh, more level margins. And also, I talked about productivity earlier. It's vital that we get productivity out of our scarce workforces. So whilst some of the pricing dynamics might be different, you know, there are different ma ways of measuring financial success. So we absolutely want lower costs because our customers are demanding it but it shouldn't be at the expense of our supplier's margins. Hmm. Okay. And then you also overlook design at this um, What sort of new design trends do you see coming? What's the future? So you, you mentioned energy earlier, mm. um, and I think energy preservation. First of all, we try and avoid mm. energy consumption. Um, so we have key industry measures such as the PUEs or the water efficiencies, also things like refrigerant gas leakage. We make sure that we are designing responsibly. In addition to that, we also make sure we're procuring energy effectively. So we had an 850 million euro bond to help to fund renewable sourcing of electricity. So all of our energy is sourced from renewable sources through our power purchase agreements. So that, that's one of the key strands. I think the other thing is, is linked to design and procurement efficiency, standardization is key. So we're using um, BIM or, and Revit in particular as our uh, way of creating a library. And we're forcing that as a discipline to get that standardization, to get that, that clarity of what we want way, way before we start building. Our building sites need to be assembly areas. Mm. It's too late to start designing then, so that improves speed and it improves output. Mm. Okay, and then, Paul, in terms of construction materials and techniques, what's the future for the sector for you? For example, there's a lot of conversation around 3D printing of homes and buildings and everything else. Can we have 3D printed data centers in the future? <laughs> I think you can certainly get 3D um, areas and, mm. and uh, specialist areas and certain parts um, that could be um, you know, properly off-site manufactured and, and skidded in. And uh, we're, currently, uh, we're currently delivering those um, across continental Europe. So, um, yeah, that, 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 that's kind of here and now. Mm. I think the, um, the scalability of that and how, you know, the, the whole concept of doing a whole data centre, maybe they're, they're, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's a flipping point of economics. Mm. Um, but I think certainly um, increased standard components, more off-site manufacture, um, it stretches, it, it, it produces better health and safety, better productivity, more, more certainty. And also what we have, you know, again, people like digital reality is that you get the, 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 the area of, of OPEX come in with CAPEX. So it's not just about the, the capital spend and uh, the, you know, the, 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 the construction of a project. It's about the life cycle. Um, we talk about sustainability. You know, it's, it's, energy is one thing, energy consumption, but it's also if you're taking the, the, the lifespan of a project, of a building, 15, 20, 25 years, it's also about the maintenance, the running of it, and of the eventual dismantling of it. Mm. And they're all things that um, we're increasingly being challenged to, to have an input on. Okay. And then final question, looking into the future of both businesses. So in the next 12 to 24 months, let's say, what's planned for digital reality, what's planned for ISG, and how are you going to work together to achieve that? Okay. If I kick off... Um, we are very ambitious. We're seeing an exponential growth in our demand. We've got a lot of the major customers coming to us, wanting bigger and bigger buildings. So we're seeing a real uptick in, in terms of scale. Our previous projections on growth are, are being doubled and tripled. So we are really seeing uh, not only the speed, but the size of growth as well. So we're out there looking for partners. We've got an established working relationship with ISG. They've successfully delivered a 200 million pound campus in Crawley for us. We're delighted with that. They're finishing off the final phases of fit out. We're talking about new opportunities, not just within the UK, but across Europe. We're hoping to venture into new fields as well. So for us, it's just go, Such go, go. Uh, great question. So um, <laughs> once we're ready to announce, we'll be, we'll be coming forward with some okay. announcements. We, we are really ramping up in scale. Just, just one quick, quick question. When it comes to retrofitting a data center, what sort of standards and requirements do you get from ISG in terms of helping to retrofit the data center? We haven't worked with ISG on retrofit, okay. but you're, you're quite, it's a great question because what we're seeing now, we're, we've been an established player now for, for nearly 15 mm. years. We've got some historic properties and how do we get those ready for sort of revamping as, as maybe leases change. We've got to keep our customers in those buildings satisfied while we refurbish around them. So it's a very, very different skill set from building a brand new building out of the ground. Mm. So these are the sort of skills as well and we're segmenting our teams now for those that look at existing buildings and converting them. Uh, maybe maintenance replacement plans and as some of the, the older assets really coming up for, you know, whether it's UPSs, rotary UPSs, static UPSs, how do you, trans how do you convert those um, facilities whilst maintaining our five nines availability? So the real challenge is, and it's more of an engineering challenge, I think working on existing buildings, more of a skill set needed there. Mm. And as we said, if skills are in short supply, 
the easier we make the new build process, the more resources are for the more tricky challenges down the line. So keeping existing customers happy while onboarding new customers is an ever sort of uh, ever present mm -hmm. challenge for us. Okay. And then, Paul, coming back to the future for ISG, what's in the cards for the next 12, 24 months? It's, um, it's very exciting. Um, we, we're, we're facing unprecedented growth um, off the back of the data centre uh, demands and also for, for the, uh, the high-tech um, distribution sheds across continental Europe. So we, we will do, we've, probably, we've got in flight at the moment about a billion euros worth of work, predominantly in continental Europe. Um, so we've got the opposite to the Brexit concerns. We, we see continental Europe as a, as a real growth area. So our, our, our challenges really are about how do we continue to offer certainty but challenge ourselves to be quicker and, mm. uh, you know, and, and, and to some degree um, more efficient in terms of money. But primarily it's in the sector at the moment, it's about speed and certainty. And uh, we're challenging ourselves to, you know, to how, do we, how do we bring that increasingly mm. to just, our customers. Just on the billion euros, is that mostly business driven by European companies and North American Asians? Because we're seeing an influx of North Americans and Asians in Europe now. It's, it's, pr it's, construction. it's predominantly um, Anglo-American customers. Okay. Um, so we're, we're finding there's, there's a very high demand and I, I think they, they, they like the, the, the comfort of, of working with established people mm. with a, a track record mm. uh, delivering across Europe. The, the interesting point about the, um, the retrofit um, uh, sector, we've, we've recognised that, and um, there is a secondary market now to, uh, okay. obviously you've got the, you know, the, the initial construction of a data centre, and then th these, these, are, these are forever moving beasts in cyber technology. Um, we have a separate team now that they specialise in that, and uh, that is a, a, another specialism. It's, it's occupied, it's got to be, you know, all these place facilities have got to be kept running. Um, and you've got, to, you've got to put in new technology which can require different challenges with the environmental controls, cooling, power. Um, so it's quite a complex, uh, quite a complex challenge in the area. It's interesting, um, your question. We're seeing all aspects of demand. So we, we talk a lot about the, the global players and the, and the real large projects. But in our business, we cater from single rack up to a whole connected campus. And we're seeing growth from all sorts of areas. Yes, in Europe, we're seeing um, incoming um, customers from the Far East. We're also seeing a, a lot of American customers. But within Europe, there's all sorts of enterprise customers that we're working with as well, all with growing demands. So how do we then, as a business, cope with all the large projects, all the way through the small projects, new space as well as existing space? So there's never been more exciting times. So back to your early question, we are definitely going to come out of the background now to be seen as a, an industry for the future. I think we would both say, if there's anyone watching this video uh, that wants to uh, pursue a career, then uh, Give Tony or myself a call, and we'll, uh, we'd love to hire you. And it's much better on the client side than it is on the contracting side. <laughs> what was, what's the average, sal the average salary for someone in the uh, sector? Just give it's us a call, average, and yeah. uh, dep <laughs> dep 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 depends how good you are. Uh, I'm not looking for a job now. <laughs> um, all right, Tony and Paul, thanks a lot for talking to me. Um, don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, and also visit the website on www.data-economy.com. Mm.